welcome to Advanced Lessons in Millennial Money featuring Robert Kiyosaki. I'm Alexandra Gonzalez. In this episode, I got a chance to speak with Robert Kiyosaki and his real estate expert and rich dad advisor, Ken McElroy. For over two decades, Ken McElroy has experienced massive success in the real estate world from investment analysis and property management to acquisitions and property development. With over 750 investment dollars in real estate, Ken offers a unique perspective on how to get the biggest return on your investment. One of the topics Robert talks about is using debt to get rich. We get a lot of questions about how that actually works. Let's listen to how Ken and Robert pulled this off. So Kenny, you want to say anything about the beauties of debt and how you learn to use debt to get rich? Sure, sure. Well, I think when I was your age, um, everybody should say, stay out of debt. So um, it wasn't until later that I realized that you can use it and um, you can use it to buy assets. So it's a big difference between good debt and bad debt. But uh, essentially all it is, it's a form of money from somebody to buy something. So in a loan or a mortgage or whatever you want to call it. So um, it's just money. And so being able to use money from a bank or from a life company or a pension or something like that. Or an investor like me. Yeah, or an investor in the form of a loan or equity is the most important thing that you can learn because I think uh, I certainly grew up with no money and my parents didn't either. And it, we, we always used to have to save for everything that we always did. You know, it was always, how much money can we save and then we can buy something. And it wasn't until later that I realized that when you use debt, that you can actually do it. You don't even have to have any money. You know, you just use other people's money. When you go to the bank and ask to borrow money, your bank is going to consider how much debt you can have based on net operating income, or NOI. Not sure what that means? Let's listen to Ken explain. NOI means net operating income. So if you really think about it, um, it's just, Income minus expenses, that's all it is. And so it's important to know where you are financially. So a banker is gonna look at your income after expenses, so that's a great way to say it. Yeah, it's really, it's really quite simple. So let's say, I'll keep the numbers simple, you have $1,000 income and you have $500 in expenses. This is a proper. Yep, so you have a $500 NOI or net operating income. So why is that important? Well, the banker looks at that number because that's the number that they see to be able to pay back any debt you might want. Right, this is where this comes in, right? Correct, so, so they're gonna look here and they're gonna say, okay, this person has $500 in NOI, therefore we can give them a loan, say up to, say $350, $250 or something like that. So they're not gonna give you a loan for the whole amount because um, they don't want you, know, that, you to be that tight. So but what they're gonna do is they're gonna look at the NOI and say, how much can we loan you? Now that we've learned about debt and NOI, what role does the property play when seeking funding for the investment? Robert and Ken discuss. Okay, so when Kenny calls me and says, I have this property, it's in horrible condition, there's no income, there's expenses all over the place, you get excited, right? Yeah, so I do. So it can work the opposite too. And, and um, so a lot of people get hung up here because they don't have a financial statement um, or you know, and, and, and any way to go to a banker, let's say. But sometimes a banker will look at the property itself. So they'll say, like the one you explained, they'll say, um, you know, well, this has a bad NOI on it, why would we give you money? You know what I mean? And then so that's when the financial education comes in and you say, well, this is what I plan to do with it. Correct, what Kenny is saying, we've had, I'm keeping the numbers simple, He's had income of zero. <laughs> yeah. And this is a thousand. Yeah. So you'd have a negative and a Y. And the banker goes, I tell me why. I can't lend on that, right? Right. Because there's there's it's a higher risk of being able to be paid back. My next question was, how can you use NOI to determine the value of a property when you're looking to invest? Let's watch. So how can you use NOI to determine the value of a property, of an investment property? So, so the, the, the NOI, or the net operating income, um, 
determines the value. So um, you, what you back into it with, with a, uh, another uh, vehicle called the capitalization rate or a cap rate. So it's actually, well, we're getting a little technical, but typically the cap rate or capitalization rate uh, divided into the NOI determines the price. So that's generally how that works. But in the case that we were talking about, the, the value of the building with no tenant in it is, is way low. Is way low, and there's really no income. So uh, it's basically whatever you, you know the structure is. So I've seen lots of situations where a vacant building, somebody might have spent five, ten million dollars on a building that's completely vacant. You know, vacant warehouses, vacant whatevers, right? Sometimes you see them get converted into clubs or whatever. Well, there's value there. Somebody spent a lot of money on it. Well, one time somebody owns it too. It could be a bank, it could be whatever. So taking that and creating value, sticking a restaurant in it, a gym in it, a, a club in it, it doesn't really matter who's in it. Well, it does because you want them to pay you, but, but you know, now you're creating the income and then that, that's how you create value. So in that example, let's say, let's say you buy a building for a million bucks you know, on, a, on a block. Um, with a tenant in it, it could be worth three, four, five million. So what we, if it's if it's a tenant in it, the value is up. Yeah, right. Because now then then you what you do is you put all that together, and then you can actually sell it. Got it. And so even if the NOI is negative, if you create a plan that creates value for the property and shows the increase that you're going to give the property's value, the bank will give you the loan. Oftentimes, yeah, and not there, always. Not yeah, always. not always, but there are there are ways to do it. So in that particular case, you might get a loan from somebody like Robert and say, "Hey, you know, I need a million bucks, and this is my plan." And then once you get a tenant in it, then you go back to the bank and you say, "Hey, give me a loan," and uh, and then they give you a loan and you pay Robert back. Every investor should be looking a way to increase income and reduce expenses. But have you ever wondered how that's possible? Ken gives us a secret. So the thing that Kenny is always looking for is after we stabilize the building, he'll tell me, he says, look, in five years, I'm gonna get this from 1,000 to 10,000. Yeah. I'll go, okay, so that I, I know I'm in it for five years with him as an investor. And on top of that, we're gonna re reduce the expenses back to 500. The NOI goes up, the value goes up, the debt goes up to, let's say, 10000 Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So I have a friend, for example, he actually bought a building uh, in um, a town up in Idaho where I have a vacation house for about a million bucks. And it was sitting, it was an old Elks building, a beautiful building downtown, but it had been vacant for a long time. He bought it and he put like 30 offices in there, small offices, you know, 1,500 to 2,000 feet each, and grew the, re the revenue, right? So everybody pays. So the, so the income went up. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So he broke it up and, and, and then leased it up, and his, you know, so he has his expenses, but now he's got 30 people paying rent as opposed to just, you know, one big vacant building, he turned it into a pretty cool workspace, you know, for everybody. But the, what, and then Kenny's, in his third book, you know, The Advanced Guide to Real Estate, his job is to get this up, keep this stable, then he goes back to the banker and says, look, we've got all these tenants, money is going up, and so we now want $12,000. Yeah. Because he's improved income kept expenses low, buildings more valuable. Yeah, the key there is the, the bank's always looking at your NOI to pay back their loan. So the, the more you can grow that, the more loan you can get. Mm -hmm. And so essentially the renters are paying your debt? Of course, okay. yeah, essentially. So if that building I was referring to goes to 50% vacant, now he's in trouble. Mm -hmm. But if you can keep it full, so now you're getting into management. But regardless of that, that's how you do it. You, there's opportunities like this everywhere. Once you've bought all these apartments, someone has to manage it for you. Unless you want to run the apartment building yourself, you're going to need a good property manager. Here's the importance of a good property management. 
And I know that another thing that you always mention in all your books and the ABCs of real estate investing is that property management is very important. Poor property management equals poor profits, right? And so I wanted you to kind of explain the importance of the property sure. management. Well, essentially all property management is is taking care of the property in every way. So taking care of the people that might be inside of this building, you know, for the various things that come up from day to day, collecting the rent and paying all the expenses. That's really all it is. And so the property manager's job is to make sure the place is clean and, and that things are getting rented and, and all those things. And so the owner of the building uh, would hire a company like that or they can do it themselves and, um, and basically uh, keep the place full. So in our world, you know, we have a, a property management company that we have about 300 employees. All we do is focus on this. These, these two things. Now, how do we keep our expenses low and keep our, our income high? Because we're always trying to grow our NOI. So our NOI, you know, we have a budget for let's say 2017 or 2018 or 2019. The goal is to grow that NOI each year. And Kenny has done such things as the way he grew the income was he, this is a little cop, he put washing machines, right? In, yeah. the, in the unit, in there are no washing machines. And so when you put washing machines in the building, this went up, right? Yeah, so uh, in my apartment houses, um, we would buy apartment houses that had washer and dryer hookups, but no machines. And so the people would walk down to the laundry mat or whatever, and it was a bit of an inconvenience for the people and all that. So I said, well, let's just buy, for $650, we can buy a washer and dryer set and stick them in all there, and we did that. And so I probably bought uh, three or 4,000 sets of washers and dryers um, for a lot of our properties. And so now all of a sudden we can charge 75 or $100 more in rent. And this goes up. Yeah. This doesn't go up as much. It's a win-win, because they have to go spend some money anyway to go do their laundry. Now they can do it here. And for me, if uh, I can pay back those washers and dryers in one year, because it's only $650 for a set, and if I can get $75 more, then all of a sudden I've got $900 to almost $1,000 more in rent. So I'm actually, it's, a, it's what I call a, a one-year payback on. So what Ken Kenny does, he borrows the money here yeah. to put washing machines in here. Again, the tenant pays it all off, and the washing machine stays there. Right. Yeah. And I think that's a brilliant idea because I know that both of you have created incentives for the renters. So for example, if they stayed for a year, you would do certain renovations, like including the washing machine. And so every year there was another incentive, which not only increased the property's value, but also the renters paying for it, essentially. And the banker was happy. Yeah. yeah. My last question was pulled straight from the YouTube comments that you guys left. I asked Robert, how would you respond to critics who say real estate is a slow lane approach to getting rich? This was Robert's reaction. Well, my, one of my last questions is, what would you guys respond to the critics who say that real estate is a slow lane approach to getting rich? They're entitled to their point. Yeah, yeah. That's fine with me. I, I, I can't think of another. I mean, I think, I think it's really super simple. Wow, real estate is very slow and very dumb. You Every know. month we got cash flow. Yeah, you know, it's, I like that. I like, you know, we're not banking on something going up. We're cr this is called creating value. We're not parking our money in something and hoping it goes up. That this is very strategic. Perfect. So everybody's got their point of view. Most people want to get rich quick. That's why they never get rich. Yeah, this is not that. <laughs> yeah, this, this is financial education. This is smart. This is having your banker be your partner. Yeah, and these are long-term assets, by the way. These are, these are, this is like, this is a business. This is like managing a business. We would not sell these. So unlike the stock market or something, you know, we're not trying to time things. We're trying to generate cash flow here and then move to the next one. Okay, perfect. So can I give you one last thing? Because those guys always upset me. So what Kenny does, he increases this, fixes this, and then when this goes up, he gives my money back. So I might give Kenny a million dollars for five years, let's say. He increases this, decreases this. The bank says, oh yeah, NOI is up. 
So he puts all this money in there, I get my million dollars back. I still own the property, I still have the cash flow going in. So all you guys who want to get rich quick, it's called an infinite return, right? Yeah, and it's tax free. It's tax free. The reason it's tax free is because when, when we use debt to pay back debt, it's debt, so it's owed. So when Robert gets his money back, it's actually tax free. Yeah, let me say I lend Kenny, this is pretty common numbers. I lend him one million. He fixes all this. The bank gives him three million. I get my million dollars back. Right. And that is tax free. I get it back. Right. And I still own the building with Kenny. So yeah, so to your question you know you got to wonder why if, if you can invest a million dollars and get it back tax-free and still have lots of cash flow and still have the cash flowing this why way. somebody would think that you know it's a pretty simple model and that's it for this episode of advanced lessons in millennial money if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to our channel and comment below muchísimas gracias por mirar este video ojalá que lo hayan disfrutado nos vemos pronto chao Slow line, oh, slow line of preach. How would you? My last cut. My last question was pulled straight from the comments in our YouTube channel. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>